Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Motorists are constantly being warned against giving lifts to hitchhikers. But all hitchhikers are not dangerous characters, and all motorists are not angels on wheels. Let the hitchhiker beware lest he accept a ride from a citizen like J. Stuart Belden. It might be his last. Listen, listen then, as Elliot Reed stars in Four of a Kind, which begins in just a minute. And now, Four of a Kind, starring Elliot Reed. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Want a ride, young fella? You bet. Well, hop in. Oh, thanks. That's how I met J. Stuart Belden and his 1959 fishtail special. That's how I took the ride I nearly didn't get back from. He looked to be about 45. He wasn't bad looking for a guy that old. He was well built, about my size, no gray in his hair. And that coat he was wearing. Boy, I'll bet plenty of camels went under the clippers for that one. What's your name, son? A rich Fowler. Married? Not me. <laughs> Don't tell me you're a woman, hater. Oh, no, it's not that. It's just... Well, I have enough trouble feeding myself. <laughs> I said the same thing years ago. Well, you change your mind with it. 9B-1863. What? A dud. Huh? Oh, did you ever play license plate poker? License plate poker? I never heard of it. Yeah, just like regular poker, except instead of drawing cards, you, you draw license plates. Now, I drew that hand, and there was nothing in it. Next car we see will be your half. Hey, here comes one now. What's the license plate? 4 3 one 3 4 Two pair, threes and fours. You beat me. Hey, that's a good game. What are the stakes? Oh, make it easy on yourself. So we say $100,000 a hand? Oh, sure. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> See what I mean? A good joke. A lot of laughs and small talk. And all the time, that big convertible eating the miles up. What a car. And when we got hungry, he stopped not at a drive-in, but at a real fancy restaurant where he picked up the check. Oh, boy, what a meal. The trouble is, they give you too much food in there. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta quit eating like that. My clothes are getting tight. Especially this coat. Hey, that coat sure is a beauty. Yeah, but I'm getting to be too much for it. Oh, Say, I've got an idea. Why don't you try it on? Oh, no, Mr. Belden. I didn't mean Go it. Go ahead. You're just enough thinner than I am, though, to fit you fine. Well, gosh, oh, I... Go on, go on. Try it on. Well, all right. Yeah. Well, it does seem to fit okay. Why, it looks like it was made for you. Feels like it, too. Son, you just got yourself a coat. <laughs> many cars on the road now, and Belden didn't seem interested in license plate poker anymore. So I just sat there, wrapped up in my new coat, and thinking what a lucky guy I was. We were whipping along a road full of treacherous curves when I turned to thank him again, and the word stuck in my throat. He changed. He was no longer the smiling host. Instead, he was fastened to the wheel like a hawk. That's what he looked like. A hawk, ready to strike. Then suddenly he threw open his door, twisted the wheel... So long, silly. ...and jumped clear. When the car hurtled into space, I was alone in it. In a moment, we continue with the second act of... Suspense. And now... Starring Elliot Reed, Act Two of Four of a Kind. I came to hurting bad. The wind knocked out of me. But at least I hadn't gone to the bottom of the gully with the car. After a minute, I started to climb back toward the road. 
I was only a few feet from the top of the bank when I looked up, and there was Belden, a gun in his hand. I ducked behind a rock, and the bullets whirred off into the gully. He wanted me dead, that was for sure. But why? Why? I waited a minute longer, and then I heard the horn. I came out from behind the rocks and crawled up to the road in time to see Belden make his getaway in that car. I couldn't tell what kind of a car it was, but I did get the license. 4L5555. He'd beat my straight. Back hurt. My head throbbed. I ached all over. And there wasn't any traffic on this back road. So I walked all the way to the next town. It was dark by the time I got there. Found the police station and something else. Well, there he is. Belden. That's him, officer. That's the boy who stole my car, forced me out, and took my coat. Just, just look in the side pocket of that coat. You'll find my wallet. What? Well, young man, what do you got to say for yourself? You, you don't understand. You see, he gave me the coat. I, I, I didn't know about the wallet. Mm-hmm. Aren't the best you can do. But I tell you, he picked me up when I was hitchhiking. He, he tried to kill me. He headed his car off the road and jumped out. And when that didn't work, he shot at me. Sergeant, let the boy go. Uh, Mr. Bell, I've changed my mind. I don't intend to press charges. No, no. Lock me up. Please don't believe him. He wants well, to kill me. It's up to you, Mr. Belden, if you don't think he'll cause you any more trouble. I'm positive that after tonight, this young man will be no trouble for anyone. No trouble for anyone. After tonight, I had to get away from here. I had to run. Hey, Rick. Hey, you come back here. Come back. Get out. Get out. In a moment, we continue with the third act of. Suspense. And now, starring Elliot Reed, Act Three of Four of a Kind. I don't know how long I ran, and I didn't know where I was, except that the town was behind me. And then I saw a bright, glaring neon sign Max and Al's Wayside Rest. Trucks welcome. Just a dinky service station and a lunch wagon, but it was sanctuary to me. Howdy. Hey, what's the matter, bud? Nothing. You sure look messed up. You been in an accident? Look, uh, mister, I, I've got to get a ride south. Do you mind if I hang around and wait until a truck comes through? No, no, I don't mind. Won't do any good, though. I ain't allowed to pick up riders. Company rules. Might be lucky and catch a wildcatter, but I doubt it. Thanks. Say, you sure you're all right? Maybe you better go in and get yourself a cup of coffee. Sure look like you could use one. Yeah, that's a good idea. If a ride turns up, I'll call you. Thanks, Mac. Oh, I'm not Mac. I'm Al. Mac works days. I felt halfway decent when I came out of the lunch wagon. I had cleaned myself up and reduced my capital to 15 cents. Al had a customer. Yes. Be 480. Oh, hey, bud, come here. Huh? I got your ride south. You have? Uh, who with? Little lady here. She's been driving all day, got an awful headache. She's going straight through. Uh, here's a fellow I was telling you about, ma'am, the one that's going south. Oh, well, I'm afraid you misunderstood. I just said I wished I had somebody to drive me. Oh, well, I don't blame you for not wanting to take a rider, ma'am, but I'd appreciate it if you change your mind. I'm in an awful big hurry. Well, I, I am tired. Oh, go ahead, miss. He's a nice fella. Oh, if you'll vouch for him. Oh, now, wait a minute, lady. I don't vouch for nobody. <laughs> oh, I guess it'll be all right. It was a pleasure to drive for her. She didn't say much, and I didn't feel like talking. She just sat beside me, her eyes closed, resting. Once in a while, I snatched a quick look at her. Long, dark eyelashes resting on her marble-like cheeks. Maybe this terrifying day would end up all right. Feel better? Oh, much better. I'm ashamed of myself hesitating to let you drive my car. Afraid I'm overcautious. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Can't be too careful. One reads of such awful things happening on the road. Awful things. 
I hadn't thought of Belden since we left Al's gas station. Now he was back in the front of my mind. And unconsciously, I tramped on the gas pedal. You're going awfully fast. These curves are treacherous. Oh, I'm sorry. Look out! Do you want to kill us both? You almost sideswiped him. I'm sorry. I, I, I... What are you honking now for? He's gone. Your horn. What about it? Oh, nothing. I, I thought I'd heard it before. Before? Look, maybe I'd better drive. No, no, I... I, I mean, I, I, I'll be all right. I'm sorry. Pull over and stop. Huh? Pull over. I'm going to drive. She drove about a mile, I guess. Neither one of us said anything. And then, without any warning, she took an abrupt turn off the highway and down a rutted dirt road. Hey, what's the idea? We better stop a while. You don't look so well. well. I'm all right now. You don't look it. Better have a drink. Reach in the glove compartment and find some scotch. No, really, I, I'm all right. Maybe I need a drink. Maybe it was the drink. Maybe it was the girl. Maybe it was just relief. But I felt calm for the first time that night. I watched her as the glow from her cigarette lit her high cheekbones. I couldn't see her eyes until she turned her head. What's your name? Ridge. Mine's Virginia. Hi. Hi. You must think I'm pretty much of a jerk the way I've been acting. Mm, it's all right. Things like that happen to everybody. Yeah, I guess so. Well, look, I, I, I'm all right now. I, I could drive. Uh, what's your hurry? Well, I, I thought... <laughs> what's the matter? Don't you like to sit here with me? Well, no, it's just... Well, I thought you were in a hurry. I'm not now. Are you? No. No, I'm in no hurry at all. She didn't seem to be moving. It was so gradual. I caught a trace of warm perfume in her hair. She smiled at me, one of those... one of those elusive smiles. Half innocent, half... Her head touched my shoulder. I accepted the invitation. Oh, I like you, Rich. I like you a lot. Yeah. You know, tonight back in the filling station when I first saw you, I... Oh, no. What's the matter, Ridge? That miniature license tag on your key ring. Yeah. 4L5555. Four of a kind. Four of a... Four of a... You play license plate poker? Mm-hmm. It's fun. Four fives. The license of the car that picked Belden up after he tried to kill me. That's right, Ridge. Then you're in it with him. That's right, Sonny. Oh. <laughs> moment, we continue with the fourth act of Suspense. And now, starring Elliot Reed, act four of Four of a Kind. I fell out of the car, hard. I didn't black out. I could see in here, but I couldn't move. Well, you took your time getting here. I couldn't help it. You were supposed to be here waiting. What if I hadn't been able to keep him? Oh, I knew I could depend on you, darling, to detain him. What's that supposed to mean? Did you have to go as far as you did? Did you have to let him kiss you? Do you know a better way to keep a man on ice? The perfect wife, the little helpmate. Oh, shut up. Put him in the back seat and let's get out of here. Sure, no one's 
discovered the car yet? Of course not. The way it's lying, nobody will see it until daylight. And then J. Stuart Belden will be found dead, burned to an unrecognizable crisp. And we can shake this place. Go to South America. You can go. I have to stick around, remember? Collect the insurance. Pretend I'm heartbroken, you're dead. Is that going to be so hard? Don't be silly. Come on, hurry. I've got to work fast. Give me a hand with it. No, wait. Here comes the car. Do you have your wallet? I'll put it in his pocket as soon as I can get him out of the car. All clear? Yes. I tried to move my arms just a little. And then my legs. They hurt. Like they'd been asleep for a long time. I'd only have one chance. One chance. If my muscles coordinated. I'd wait until he dragged me out of the car. And then I'd do the best I could. Virginia, get the gasoline can out. I felt him grab me under the arms. I opened my eyes just in time to see a murderous wrench in the girl's hand. As she brought it down, I closed my eyes. Something hit me hard. But it wasn't the wrench. It was Belden. The wrench had folded him up. And he collapsed on top of me. She didn't know I was watching her. She was too busy dragging Belden over to the rim of the cliff. Well, Stuart, this is how you planned it. Accidental death. And then she pushed him. And he disappeared over the edge. I didn't wait to see any more. I crawled out of that car and I started to run right down the middle of the road. Then she saw me. Wait, stop, wait, Red! But I kept on going. I heard the car starting. She was coming right at me. First, I thought she was just trying to catch up to me. Then I realized she was trying to run me down. She was trying to kill me. It was just a question of seconds. And suddenly, around the bend, a big truck. I was sandwiched between them. I stood stunned with horror. Her scream ringing through my head. And the picture of her in the car, swerving off into space, into the canyon below. Hey, hey, bud. You all right? Yeah. Oh, what happened? She went off the road. Crazy woman driver. Hey, what you staring at? Your license plate. CM1111. Oh, now, look, look, it wasn't my fault. You saw how it happened. Four aces. I'd won. I had taken the last hand. But I've sworn off poker. License plate poker, that is. The stakes can be too high. Suspense. In which Elliot Reed starred in William N. Robeson's production of Four of a Kind. Written by John Bagney and Gwen Bagney Gielgud. In just a moment, the names of the supporting players and a word about next week's story of suspense. Supporting Elliot Reed in Four of a Kind were Joan Tompkins, Alan Reed, Jack Crucian, and Barney Phillips. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with... Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. News analysis follows next on CBS Radio.